Hi everyone, my name is Sandy Beeler. I've been going to the Dickens Universe for about 10 years now. And I'm so excited to be able to talk about numbers five and six or chapters 13 through 18 with you. Okay, first of all, I would really, really like it if you guys would sort of write out that first sentence of the book about whether David Copperfield will prove to be the hero of his own life. Uh, and keep that with you at all times when you're reading this book because that it really is the question that the book sets up and will show you th throughout that almost 900 pages. Um, so please keep that in mind when you when you read everything. And while the first chapter is called I Am Born, the second chapter is I Observe. So the first thing we learned about David is that he is an observer. So again, that has to be in your mind throughout your reading. So chapters 13 through 18, another new beginning in a way, both of David's life and of the book. Uh, so, so the first chapter is called A Sequel to My Resolution. And I love here how Dickens chose the word sequel. I mean, he could have used consequence or result, but he chooses the word sequel to remind us, I think, that this is a memoir. This is a written book about a person's life from his point of view. Always bear that in mind because that's really important as you read this. Um, so, and, I th and he's telling you that. Uh, so the, these chapter titles, always pay attention to the chapter titles. They will give you a good idea, whether they're being ironic or not. In these cases, in these chapters, I don't think there's so much irony uh, as information because we are being told that there's a new beginning happening. And in fact, David will get a new name in these chapters. Um, also, let's talk about names. Dickens is known for his names. The names in David Copperfield are so interesting because for the most part, they're very material and elemental. Copper, stone, field, heap, bark. <laughs> I mean, this is elements of life. And notably, there's macabre and, of course, peggedy, which don't fit in that, in that same category and are noted for it. Um, also, there are some marvelous shadow characters that you're going to be introduced to besides the real characters. So the real characters that you're introduced to, marvelous Miss Betsy Trotwood, his aunt. Now, we've seen her before, but this is our first formal introduction. And when Dickens introduces characters for the first time, he uses very careful language, so pay very close attention when we are being introduced to new characters. So Betsy Trotwood and her marvelous green fan that swivels when she needs it to, <laughs> and her obsession with donkeys and the wonderful Janet. Uh, these are new introductions. We will meet again with the macabers. New characters, Dr. Strong, Annie, his lovely young wife, and her amazing mother, the general. Um, Agnes and Mr. Wickfield, and of course, one of the great Dickensian villains, Uriah Heep. So, uh, what is the first word that Dickens uses to describe Uriah? Cadaver. So, I, I really would like you to pay attention when you're introduced to characters because Dickens will give you keys as to how to think about them when you're first introduced. So, um, some marvelous characters and some shadow characters. In fact, the whole book is called The History and Adventures of David Copperfield the Younger, which begs the question about David Copperfield the Elder, who is, in fact, also a character in this book, even though he's dead at the very beginning. And then there's Mr. Dick, who has another name, but we're not allowed to use it. There is this dark... A man who frightens Aunt Betsy, who were never introduced, who were not introduced to, but he's in the, literally in the shadows, and of course there is David's sister that never was Betsy Trotwood. 
Uh, and of course, David gets his new name of Trotwood Copperfield here. So names are very important. And even the characters who are mentioned but aren't big characters will have importance in this book. Um, what I want you to really pay attention to here is the fact that David is an observer, right? We're told he's an observer over and over again. But is he a reliable and a competent observer? And these pages will also show that. So the first thing I want you to note is when he decides to make his, his flight to Dover, 70 some odd miles, which is quite a, quite a jaunt for a kid, um, he tells us, this observer of life, that he has no idea what he was thinking or feeling himself during this. So that's pretty curious, isn't it? He's never really at a loss in any other place as to somebody's motives or their facial expressions. He is quite an observer, but he doesn't seem to know a thing about himself here, does he? Fast forward to chapter 18, where he's telling us about his teen years and his various crushes. And again, is he reliable? Is he competent to tell us everything he's seeing? Is he a discerning, wise observer? Or is he sometimes getting things wrong? Did you agree with him, for instance, when he was trying to fall asleep under the window at Salem House on his flight in chapter 13? When he decides not to show anybody that he's there, partly because Steerforth probably isn't there, uh, but also Traddles. Now, Steerforth, we know his love for Steerforth and his belief that Steerforth is this kind of amazing, all that heroic guy. But is he? Do we believe that? Do we see that? And Traddles, he questions whether Traddles has the discretion. D really? Really, David? This is the guy who stood up to Mr. Creakle for Mel, Mr. Mel, an underdog. So again, please pay attention to David's, David's observations because he is an observer, but does he always get things right? Um, so these are things to think about that start up in these pages. Also, the beginning of Mr. Uh, Macabre's wonderful letter writing, which is just something I absolutely adore and is fun to look at. Um, so enjoy these pages. You're going to have so much fun with these characters and with the story of David Copperfield and his life. And please, let us all know whether you believe he is the hero, and if not, who might be. Thanks. Thanks.